Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson 26, we will cover the XLOOKUP function. XLOOKUP is a newer function that is meant to replace VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. XLOOKUP is available in the 2019 versions of Excel and Microsoft 365. If you have older versions of Excel, you will need to use the VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP functions. In this lesson, we will cover how to use XLOOKUP in replacement of VLOOKUP. We are skipping HLOOKUP because people tend to use VLOOKUP more often. All right, let's start with an exact lookup example. So the worksheet has two tables. The one on the left consists of handbag orders. And then we have the lookup table on the right, which we will use to assign unit prices to this column here. So let's go ahead and enter the function. And you can see the first argument is the lookup value, which is materials. So I'm going to select the first material cell. The second argument is the lookup array, which will be the first column of the lookup table without any headings. So I'm going to select the cotton and the leather cells here. The third argument is the return array, which will be the column that you want the X lookup function to return from the lookup table. Since we are filling out a unit price column, we want the function to return unit prices. So let's select the unit price column from our lookup table. Now you can see that there's three other arguments in the function syntax, but they are in the square brackets, meaning they're optional. So let's just ignore them for now. I'm going to press enter and you can see the functions working. Now to drag down that function to fill in the rest of the column, I'm going to have to freeze my second and third arguments here, which freezes the lookup table in the function. Now you're, you can manually go in and add the dollar signs between the letter and the number, but the quickest way to do it is to actually highlight the entirety of the second and third argument and then press F4. So you can see the dollar signs are added, I press enter and I'm going to drag the rest of the formula down. I'm going to play around with the materials column by changing this first cotton cell to fabric. And you can see our lookup function is returning an error. And that's because there's no corresponding entry in our lookup table for the material fabric. So what we can actually do is utilize one of those optional arguments that we ignored before to return a value that means no match is found. So if we click into this cell and go into the formula bar, we can see one of the optional arguments is called if not found. So what this means is that if the XLOOKUP function finds no match in the lookup table, it will return the value in this position. So we are going to put no match in um, quotations and then press enter and you can see the function is now returning no match for the material fabric. Another change I wanna make is the sorting of my lookup table. Currently it is sorted from A to Z, but I wanna change it from Z to A. So to do this, I'm going to highlight the entire lookup column without the headers and go to the filter and sort button here. I'm going to choose sort Z to A, and you can see it just switches the um, order of the leather and cotton rows. But most importantly, if we look over to the unit price column here, you can see that there has been no effect. So this means that the lookup array does not have to be sorted for an exact lookup. All right, let's move on to a range lookup example. So again, I have two tables on the worksheet here. The table on the left consists of exam scores for a class and we are going to assign a letter grade to each student in this column here. And to do that, we will use the letter grade assignment criteria table. Now the first step will be to set up our lookup table and I'm going to paste a format to the right here. We will fill out the scores column first and remember you will enter the lower bound of each score range from lowest to highest. So this first cell here will be zero the next one will be a 60, since the second score range is a 60 to a 65. The third one will be 65, and I will quickly fill in the rest. Now we can go ahead and fill in the corresponding letter grades for each score range. This first cell will be an F, 
the next will be D, the next will be C, and so on. Let's go ahead and enter the XLOOKUP function into our letter grade column. And you can see the first argument is the lookup value, which is the student's exam scores. So let's select the first exam score cell. The second argument is the lookup array, which will be the scores column of the lookup table without the header. The third argument is the return array, which is the column of the lookup table that the XLOOKUP cell will return. Since we're filling out a letter grade column, we want the XLOOKUP function to return letter grades, so we will select the letter grade column in the XLOOKUP table without the header. Now let's press enter to see if that works. So you're seeing we're getting an error, and that's because when you're using a range lookup, you have to specify some of those uh, optional arguments. So if we go back into the cell and into the formula bar, we'll have to specify a value for if not found. So let's put not found in quotation marks. Now the next argument is called match mode, and you can see the default is zero for an exact match. We're not doing an exact match, we're doing a range match, so let's try the next option, which is minus one. Alright, let's press enter and see if that works. So the student received a 59, so they should have a letter grade of F, so let's go over here and check if it's correct. It is. So let's lock those table array cells into place, drag down the rest of the formula, and see if all the other ones are correct. So I'm going to highlight my second and third arguments here and press the F4 button on my keyboard. Alrighty, and let's drag the cell down. All right, let's check the second cell here. The student received a 60, so they got a letter grade of B. And if we go here, we can see that's correct. So our XLOOKUP function seems to be working properly. All right, I'm gonna play around with the match mode argument a bit by going back into this first cell and deleting the minus one. This time I'm going to select the positive one, press enter, and then drag the formula down to update the rest of the column. Now let's see if the function is still correct. So this first student received a 59, so the function assigned a letter grade of D. But if we look at the assignment criteria table, any score under 60 should be assigned a letter grade of F. So our letter grade column is no longer correct, and this has to do with the match mode. If I go back here and delete the one, you can see that a match mode of one is an exact match for the next larger item. Because the score 50 is not in the lookup table, then it looks to the next largest item, which is a 60, and then assigns the corresponding letter grade, which is a D. That's not correct. What we really want is the minus one, which is the exact match for the next smaller item. This means that if the lookup value is not in the lookup table, then they look up the next smallest item. So the score 59 is not in the lookup table, so the next smallest value is a zero, and then they assign the corresponding letter grade of F. So now you understand what range lookup really means. It's a range of scores that will be assigned to a single letter grade for example, any scores between 0 and 60 will be assigned an F. So really, Excel interprets any student that gets a 59 to be treated as if they received a 0. So let's change the match mode back to minus 1 and then update the rest of the column. The last thing I wanted to cover was the sorting of the lookup table. You can see the scores are currently sorted from lowest to highest, but what happens if we sort them from highest to lowest? I'm going to select the entire table without the column headers, go to the sort and filter button, and choose sort largest to smallest. Now if I go to my letter grade column here, you can see that nothing has changed. For me, I've always formed the habit of sorting the scores from lowest to highest, so I'm going to sort the table back to how it was originally, by selecting it again, going to sort and filter, and choosing sort smallest to largest. Again, if we look back at the letter grade column, you can see that none of the scores have changed. 
Let's do a quick summary of the exact and range x lookup before we conclude today. So for the exact x lookup table, it does not matter whether you sort the lookup column or not. For the range lookup table, sort the lookup column from lowest to highest, or a to z, or highest to lowest, or z to a. As long as the lookup column is sorted, it's fine. So that concludes our lesson today, where we covered two types of X lookup, range, and exact. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next lesson.